But at some point, this whole collapse is going to accelerate. It's gonna be like going straight down on a roller coaster. And a lot of people aren't wearing their seatbelts and they're gonna fly off this roller coaster. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. I just came across this article uh, on the hedge about an hour ago and I'm sure this is going across the internet right now. Gas problem halts gas shipments to Europe via critical pipeline. What does this mean? This is big, big trouble for Europe. Uh, this co could really set off financial chaos in Europe. Uh, energy shortages and energy crisis, uh, they will be forced to source their energy from somewhere else and they're going to pay a lot more to do it. This also is going to be very good news for countries like China and India who don't mind buying Russian oil in rubles. Russia just came out and said, if you want to buy our oil, you're going to buy it in rubles or we're shutting it off. And that's what they just did to Europe, uh, apparently, according to this article on The Hedge. Gonna be great news for any country who doesn't mind buying discounted Russian oil in rubles. And I believe we're gonna see more and more countries step up and do this. And this is gonna be a very harsh consequence uh, to us and to the US dollar. And we're going to, and we're right now, watching the process of the US dollar beginning to be phased out. This is just the beginning of the end for the US dollar. How long it takes, don't know. But we're watching history now being taken, pl taken place, and we're watching a real threat to the world reserve currency we call the US dollar, a real competitor, uh, uh, as Russia, China, India, the BRICS nations, all now looking for ways to get around the dollar. They're going to phase it out, ladies and gentlemen, and the rest of the world is going to jump on board. So be prepared because America will feel it the most. Uh, our standard of living is going to fall the most. And most people right here in the US are completely unprepared uh, and, and absolutely naive, don't even know. Let's just face it, most people have no idea what's going on and they could care less, but they're going to care uh, at some point. CNBC, over a third of Americans plan to spend their tax refund right away. And what are they gonna spend it on? They're gonna spend it on paying their bills. 31% said it will go right to rent, to medical bills, or debt. 15% said it's going to go to gas, groceries, and essentials. Uh, we are living in a whole different world, ladies and gentlemen, a whole different world. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and we were talking about the state of affairs uh, that this country is in financially. And my buddy Marshall, a very, very good friend of mine, been friend for, for many, many years, and we were just comparing the US to an addict. The, the, the United States of America is addicted to free money. It's addicted to uh, low interest rates. It's addicted to cheap credit. And the addict is never going to get help until the addict can admit that there's a problem in the addict, the addict is willing to do something about it. Um, and we were just talking about this and we have a real sickness here. And this sickness of 0% of interest rates and cheap money and money printing and spending money we don't have. This is America, the biggest debtor nation on planet Earth. And the addict has two choices. It can admit that it has a problem and it's willing to do something about it, and it's going to be willing to go through the pain and suffering of the withdrawals by doing something about it, by getting off the addiction, getting off the cheap, free money. The other option, the other choice to the addict is the addict just continues to 
indulge even more. Uh, the addict continues taking more and more medicine. In our case, more QE, more money printing, more debt, more cheap money. And if you go this route, if you, if you take the second choice as a nation, and this nation of addiction, addicted to all this cheap money and free money, if you go this route, in which, in which case we probably will go this route, the addict at some point overdoses and dies. And that is my biggest concern and my biggest fear for this country is that we're gonna go the route of an addict that doesn't want help, doesn't admit there's a problem, cannot stop the addiction of the free and cheap money and at some point overdoses and it's game over. That's really where we are at as a nation. And you know, these people today that just walk around oblivious to what's happening in Eastern Europe, oblivious to what's happening to their pensions, oblivious to the market manipulation, uh, all this money creation, oblivious uh, to the direction that we're going in, we're broke. People just don't realize it. And, you know, somebody commented the other day that, well, if it gets bad, they'll just file bankruptcy. They'll just file bankruptcy. And people figure they'll just take the easy way out. That when things get really, really bad, they'll take the easy way out. And I just noted a few things here. And, you know, the bankruptcies, bankruptcy laws changed since the last crash. And I don't, I don't, I, I can't tell you specifically, but it, it's a little harder to file bankruptcy now than it was back um, uh, pre pre financial crisis time. But it will have an instant negative impact on your financial future, no doubt. And as we are heading deeper into this depression, which many Americans now are, are beginning to admit that we're either in a recession and many believing that we're even in a depression right now. People believe that they'll file bankruptcy and have this negative impact on their financial future at the worst possible time. Think about that. Would, why would you file bankruptcy in a depression? It's the worst possible time. And ask yourself, how will you obtain credit at the worst possible time? How would you rent a house, rent an apartment, buy a house if you just file bankruptcy at the worst possible time? And let's not forget that it will leave you with a lot of non-dischargeable debt. For example, tax debt, not gonna be able to discharge that in a bankruptcy. Property debt, student loan debt, spousal support, child support, none of this can be discharged during uh, a bankruptcy. And remember, you may get off the hook slightly and not have to pay some of the debt back, but you're not gonna get off scot-free. You're gonna be paying something back. So people just believe that there's gonna be some easy way out like a bankruptcy if things get bad. Or I'll just depend on my credit cards. But what happens when they shut your credit cards off? Or they say, hey, your $10,000 balance now is only going to be a $5,000 line of credit or a $2,000 line of credit. You know, everybody goes, oh, I got a $20,000 line of credit or $10,000 line. Well, what if the bank says, hey, we're cutting that in half or, or you're gonna have a $2,000 line of credit, that's it. Or they just shut you off completely. What would people do? We are so reliant on the easy way out. We're so reliant on the cheap money. We're so reliant on credit cards. Nobody, for the few exceptions out there, is prepared for what's coming. Somebody um, said that um, I was uneducated because I said, get your money out of the banks. Just keep the minimal amount in there that you need to pay bills because it can be seized. It can be frozen. It can, your, your accounts can be shut down. Cyber attacks, grids down. Um, an agency can come in and say that you're under investigation for this, this, or this. Your account's frozen. Maybe a judgment. Your account, they're going in, they're taking your money. Well, somebody said I was uneducated because they said the FDIC insures all bank accounts. Now, the last time I checked, and this is kind of difficult to find, but the last time I checked, there was, the FDIC had $25 billion uh, in resources uh, to insure 
over $11 trillion of depositor money. Okay, so to that person out there who says, I'm uneducated, like, hey, hey, look, I wasn't a great student. I was a terrible student, hated school, but I can add two plus two. I can connect the dots and I can read some data and I have a pretty good idea and a pretty good sense of what's going on. But uh, maybe this person has three degrees and maybe they went to Stanford or Berkeley and they're, you know, maybe they're a lot smarter than me and you. And, but for whatever reason, they don't have any common sense and they haven't looked at the data because again, Last time I checked, there was $25 billion in money, in resources that the FD, FDIC had to insure over $11 trillion of deposited money in the US. So if things all of a sudden took a huge dump at this, uh, instantly, uh, there is not enough in, money from the FDIC to insure all the depositor money in US banks. Fact, period, end of story. So to the person out there, who must be very educated, they didn't do their homework. So, you, you know, look, you could have a third grade education, ladies and gentlemen, and you're probably brighter than most people now with a degree. Uh, these people who think they're so smart with that 80,000 or $100,000 degree hanging on their wall, yet they don't even wanna work at Starbucks, or maybe they are working at Starbucks, or they're working a minimal type service type job, because they can't even get a job with that degree. The, the degree is worthless. They've been duped, bamboozled, fooled, suckered um, into this degree, mainly to feed the ego, oh, I have a degree, even though I don't really know anything. And that's not to everybody. There's people out there with degrees, and I have attorney friends and engineers and architects and people like that who have degrees, and they're smart, and, they're, and but they're awake too. But so many people just rely on a piece of paper hanging on their wall to tell them that they're smart when they know nothing that's going on. They have no idea uh, what's happening in Eastern Europe right now. They don't have an, any idea what an ounce of gold is or how much it is, how much an ounce of silver is right now, uh, where the Dow Jones closed uh, on Friday. They have no idea. Uh, again, these are the people that are having to settle for minimum wage jobs now with a $100,000 degree hanging on the wall and they're gonna be debt slaves for probably their entire life. So again, do your own due diligence, do your own homework. You know, someone said that also, this is, this is uh, what somebody else said, and, and this is, again, pure ignorance out there, that there's no such thing as a plunge protection team. I'm making it up. Uh, from my recollection, the plunge protection team was established in 1988, uh, brought in uh, by Ronald Reagan uh, after the collapse of 1987. And they were brought in to really intervene that, uh, that if the market was getting out of control, that they would step in and put the brakes uh, in these markets and, and basically manipulate the markets. Uh, you know, we have circuit breakers in these markets now. We have the Fed buying treasuries and bonds, which this person said that the Fed's not, that the Fed doesn't buy stocks. The Fed doesn't, he, the Fed's not in the stock market. Well, of course it is. It buys bonds and treasuries every day. It's buying stocks. It's manipulating these markets. The, there are no fundamentals in these markets any longer. So I want to uh, switch gears here, but, uh, you know, there, are, there is so much ignorance out there Again, and I wish people would really um, take five minutes and do a little bit of homework and, and a little due diligence because I think if they did, um, they would be much, much more awake. Stop relying on that $80,000 degree on your wall now, now that you can't find a job, you can't get employed, and you're forced to work at Starbucks or a burger joint, which if that's all you can do, God bless you. I think everybody, if, if they're able and capable, get out there and do something productive. But I think that now people are hoping that their college tuition debt's gonna be paid for, uh, that the, uh, this uh, uh, forbearance or moratorium is gonna end soon, and these people are freaking out. But it's these same people who got suckered and hoodwinked into to buying one of these, these degrees only to be left with a service sector job, yet they don't know about the plunge protection team. Uh, they don't know anything about the FDIC. Things that all of you know, and thank God you do. Knowledge is no doubt power. We cannot even begin to fix anything. We, we can't do anything for ourselves until we admit that there's a problem. 
And once we do that, uh, we can begin to, to solve the problem or at least preparing for a very rough time, right? If we don't admit there's a problem, then we have no concern, no reason to prepare and get ready. Once we admit that there's a problem, once we have a concern that this thing is getting out of control, we take action and we prepare mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. I wanna talk about home builders here for a couple minutes. The, we, <laughs> we have a massive housing bubble and this thing is going to get ugly. 800,000 single family homes under construction right now, ladies and gentlemen, under construction. And if we go back to 2005, 2006, we were around 950, 960,000 uh, homes under construction around that time. Uh, according to the U.S. Census Bureau data, 500,000 of these homes have already been purchased. 270,000 have been built on spec. Uh, many of these purchased homes are going to run into big trouble because now that rates are going up, uh, people are going to bounce out of these contracts because uh, when they um, purchased these homes a couple months ago, rates were in the threes. Now we're approaching 5%. And that's going to be a big deal. If you put down a deposit on a home at, let's say, 3%, and your, uh, your payment was $3,500 a month, today at 4.8, 4.9%, that payment is over $4,000. Now... If we, uh, we're, we're going to get a rate hike, probably 50 basis points now. I'm going to go 80% May. We see a 50 basis point rate hike. It is a matter of time before we start getting close to 6% on a 30-year mortgage. At 5.9%, that $3,500 mortgage goes to $4,200. And that's a big difference. That is a big difference. And we're going to see, because of this, because of rates going up, mortgage rates, uh, we're going to see home builders begin to get themselves into big trouble like we saw back in 07, 08. And um, these, these homes right now, many of these builders can't even finish the homes. They can't get the appliances. They can't get the parts uh, to finish these homes. And, and the longer and the later they wait to get these homes completed, the more risk they're taking on that rates are going to go up and heaven forbid something comes out of left field that we're not expecting right now and we could see an instant instant collapse but um, another problem uh, i want to say too uh, on this video is less and less buyers are going to be able to qualify for these homes as um they're going to be squeezed out by the monthly payment. So people who could qualify for 3,500, they may not qualify for 4,200. They may not qualify for 4,000. So a lot of people uh, are going to cancel and a, a, a lot of these contracts say that if for whatever reason the buyer cannot get financing, they're eligible to cancel these contracts. And many of these buyers who purchased these homes a couple months ago, that these homes may not be completed for the next two or three months, they're not going to qualify because rates are going up. What about the 270,000 spec homes currently under construction right now? What role will rising mortgage rates play in regards to the 270,000 spec homes under construction right now. It's gonna play a very negative role in my opinion. Comment down below, let me know your thoughts. But whether it's spec homes or homes that are, have already been purchased uh, by these, these new home builders, it's gonna be a big problem as rates inch up and up and up. And where's the breaking point? In the 08 crash, it was 6%. Is it going to be 6% again? Will it even take 6% to really crush the housing market? Will it be 6, 6.5, 7, 8? What, what will it be? Where do you think this is all going to go? Will we even see 6% mortgage rates anytime? Or will we see the Fed back off 
and go back to low rates. Um, I don't know. I, I think that we're going to see the 30-year mortgage rate go above 6%, and I think we're going to see that happen this year. They said that we wouldn't even be at 5% till the end of this year. We're already, I think, at 4, 8, 4, 9 this weekend. And after that 50 basis point hike in May and another hike coming in June, I think, I think this summer uh, we're going to see the 30 year at 6%, no doubt. I would be shocked if we don't. Could it go even higher? Absolutely. This is going to have catastrophic consequences uh, on the housing market. Uh, existing homes, new homes, spec homes, you name it. It's going to be big trouble. So uh, take the weekend. Continue to prepare, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. I hope everybody's doing great. Thank God this weekend. Just really take a minute and thank God for everything you have. You're, you're living, you're breathing, you have family, you have friends, you have pets, you're alive. Uh, you, you are watching videos like this. That means you're awake, you're aware, and you're preparing. So you have a lot to be thankful for. It doesn't matter the zip code, the car you drive, the watch you wear. That doesn't matter. What matters is what you're doing right now. You are waking up and you are preparing the best that you can. There are people that can prepare better than others, but do what you can. Do whatever you can today to put the odds in your favor that you prosper during the worst of times and that um, we're going to kind of soften the blow when this thing really hits. And, you know, I believe we've really witnessed a, a death by a thousand cuts. But at some point, this whole collapse is going to accelerate. It's going to be like going straight down on a roller coaster. And a lot of people aren't wearing their seatbelts and they're going to fly off this roller coaster. Make sure that you are preparing. Have a great weekend and God bless.